due to the potentially dark and frightening content of our investigations. This episode may not be suitable for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Ghosts, spirits, demons. What are these entities? What do they want and why are they here? My paranormal investigation crew's goal is to answer these questions and others like them. Questions we've been asking for centuries. Who are you? We've assembled a crew of the most dedicated enthusiasts in the area to capture evidence of these entities. What we find might be disturbing, dangerous even, but we are prepared for the journey ahead of us. The question is, are you prepared to take this journey with us? It's midnight, falling into the darkness, guided only by Midnight's Light. This is Midnight's Light, Paranormal. On the outskirts of New Lebanon in rural Montgomery County, Ohio, there's a quiet stretch of houses surrounded by farmland. One house in particular seems to embody the peaceful atmosphere, that is, from the outside. The inside tells a very different story, the story of a haunting on Sulphur Springs. The land surrounding the home has a rich Native American history dating back hundreds of years. In the early 1700s, the Miami Indians roamed this land in search of stone and copper. For the majority of the Miami, their time here was cut short after the British defeated the French and Native forces during the French and Indian War. Although, under the leadership of Chief Little Turtle, the remaining Miami Indians won several battles against American forces. After the Revolution, they were eventually forced to move west into modern-day Indiana. The land surrounding the home may have a long history, but the home itself was only built in 1971. The local family who built the house sold it to Mr. Powell who lived there from 1984 until 2016 when he passed away. Shortly after the house went on the market, it was purchased by the current owner, Tanya Wall. She recently contacted us because she has been experiencing high levels of paranormal activity. We set up an interview with Tanya to discuss her experiences and find out a little more about the house. I'm here with the current resident of the home, Tanya Wall. Nice to see you, Tanya. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How long have you um, been in this house? For? for about six months. Six months? Mm-hmm. And um, when did you start to notice things happening? Before I moved in. Before you moved when in? When we were getting, well, doing the house. Painting the walls and doing the floors and stuff like that. Um, was there any thing in particular that you noticed, like, right off the bat when you first moved? Yes, I was painting the wall, or painting the walls, painting the, I already painted the living room and the kitchen, and I was moving down the hallway with the same paint that I used for the living room. My painting things were in the sink. Everything was dried from the night before, and when I turned on the hallway light, there was a strip of paint. Just a, somebody painted the same color, the color I was going to paint, down the hallway. Down the hallway. Yes, and I thought my daughter did it, and I called her, and nobody did it. Do you want to take me to yes. that area? Mm-hmm. Somebody just just walked yeah, down the hall. Just one strip. Hmm. And there was no no paint drips. on the floor. No. And like I said, my paintbrushes and everything were dry in the sink still or by the sink. Do you think that this part of the house is kind of a hot spot? Do you yes. feel certain places? Through here, yes. Through here. Yep. Right through here. When, right here. when my dog comes in here, she does like a circle. It's just everything in this room just feels different. And do you think that she's like seeing something? Oh possibly? yeah, the way she acts, uh, that's why I close the door because she goes in a circle like like something's here. Oh wow. You know how dogs just like look, I mean, Like know. when a visitor comes yeah, in, Yeah, that's they exactly jump how she does. Them. Only this room. Wow, it makes you wonder, you know, who that could possibly be. Exactly. And, you know, dogs can see in planes that we can't see, similar to our full spectrum camera, and that's why we use that. Okay. And um, to kind of see what they're seeing, so she could quite possibly be seeing a spirit. Is there any other parts of the house, the house that yes, you experience stuff? Alright, so tell me a little bit about what happens in this part of the house. When I go to bed at night, every night, I've got the same routine. I check everything, I check windows, doors, make sure everything's off, everything is closed. This one right here opens, this will be open in the morning, and that one over there above the microwave will be open in the morning. And those and I know. I see. That's what I'm saying. Those see how strong. Don't and just I know. easily come open. Yeah, no. And I know they're closed. 
And that's strange that it's like specifically those two, those two cabinets. And how many times do you think that you've experienced this? About three. Three and three it's times. only been six, six months. months? Six months. Oh wow. The man that lived in this house before I did, this was his bedroom. So do you know how long that he lived in the house? From 84 until 2016. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah so. That's a long time to build you know, a life in one area. And I think he had a sister that lived here one time with him. Really? Yes. His car after he passed away was here. Yeah. And the car he passed away in. So, yeah. And did you say that they parked that car in the garage? In the garage of the current home. And it's only been out of the garage for maybe a couple months. Oh, wow. What happened exactly to uh, the last resident of the home? He had a heart attack in his car down the street. Just on his way home. Down the street. Right down the street. Oh, wow. And that he was. He went off the side of the road, but. I guess they just hauled his car back here, towed it back here because it had a flat tire and everything. And it sat here the at least a year. Wow. And, you know, that's what he died in. And this is the house that he lived in for exactly. so long. You know, when he died down the road, this could be the place that he knew to go because he wasn't at his home when he died. That's true. While we were doing the interview and walking around the house, our psychic medium Steve was taking readings of the house and writing down things. And you said that you have a question that you feel like you. Well, need I mean, to I just want to read what I have. I'll, I'll probably get more, and this is not like what we usually do, but yeah. um, I'll probably get more the night of the of the investigation. But there's a spirit here that you knew in life, and this spirit led you here to this house. I'm about to cry now. And it's because. The property is a place that makes it easier for the dead to communicate. This spirit is telling me not to tell you their name, but they're telling me, because if I just tell you, there may be some doubt. So here, maybe this means something to you. I get a feeling that if I, what I'm gonna tell you, you'll understand. Okay. okay? Something about a sand castle. I don't know. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're, they're showing me a picture of a real sandcastle. The fact that you're saying, the words I'm crying, the fact that you're saying that something led me here. Yeah. When I moved here, uh -huh. at nighttime when I had that sunset, I sit out here and I always think that my brother is the reason why I'm here. <sighs> and I, I swear to God, when I walk by that room in the morning, that picture that's in there, every morning, there's not been one morning that I don't say good morning. That's, I think, why you're here. The, the sandcastle thing, though, I, they're showing me a, like a picture of a sandcastle, a real one, and then there's this picture, and it's it's like a, a, a greeting card or a picture that might have been in your room or somewhere, and it's of a castle in pa like pastel colors. And then it says here to think about it. You'll get it sometime. If you think about it, it may not hit you right away, Okay. But you'll, you'll understand what that means. And the weird thing about it, and I, I've got a video on my phone. Chelsea, there's a song that he, we used to be his favorite song when Bella passed away. That that night I was upset and devastated. I had to go to school the next morning. I was driving down the street. I had my sunroof up, but I was crying. That song starts from beginning to end. When I go through something, it plays on Chelsea's radio. When she leaves for what work. What song is it? Hold on. I oh, went. I can't even think of the words. Oh, where's my phone? Well, I'm like Robert Aston now on Dave Matthews Band. Um, oh heck. Where it says I'm the king of the castle. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. It will play from beginning to end. It's the castle thing. Oh my god. Wow. Like that hit me hard when you said that one line. And what's the chances okay. that that's the one line that you said? I know. It's like every that's time crazy. something happens, it's like the way he's letting us know he's around as that song comes on. I, I feel like, um, I guess if it's your brother's spirit, that he, he really wanted me to relay this to you. We felt that this interview provided us with important information that would be helpful during our investigation. We're here at the Wall Residence, home of Tanya Wall, just outside of New Lebanon, Ohio. She contacted us because she has been experiencing high levels of paranormal activity. Midnight Light Paranormal is here to capture evidence of these claims. Our audio technician, Richard Salisbury, has came up with an ITC experiment 
Richard, what do you want to accomplish with this? Okay, so what we do, um, if you can see it on me right now, we'll turn off the lights here in a minute. Um, basically, we took multiple laser projectors and we're setting them up. Um, so the idea is if something passes in front of these lasers, it doesn't matter where it's at in between here, it should you, you should be able to see like a string of the light of the laser actually light up. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so if we get any movement or running across anything like this, you should be able to see it light up. Um, and what we did is I went through and I made sure that these were low heat, um, that they were LED. That way they didn't interfere with any temperature changes with any of our other equipment. Um, and so we're just hoping that when we, if we do catch something on there, which hopefully we do, um, that we're actually able to see beams of light and hopefully maybe get an out figure or kind of give us some help trying to figure out what it is. Awesome. Hope that we capture some good evidence with that. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to shut off the light and see what it looks like on the IR um, here and go from there. So this is what we're going to be looking this at? This is what we're going to be looking at. And so hopefully, even though my shadow will block it out against the wall, hopefully, like you see this along my arm, um, you can kind of see those dots hopefully portraying outwards. Um, I don't know how we're going to deal with or how it's going to appear when we're running with a different figure because it's kind of hard to judge depth a little bit like this. Um, to know if it's actually touching the wall or if we're seeing something here. But I feel like there's a definite difference and so we'll be able to tell. Alright, sounds good. Well, we'll see. Go cool, cool. As usual, we have set up four stationary cameras in areas of the home that we feel are hot spots. Camera 1 is set up in the hallway where Tanya claims that her wall was mysteriously marked on with paint. Camera 2 is set up in the back room where Tanya's dog Paisley behaves very strangely. It is also the location of our new ITC laser experiment. Camera 3 is set up in the room where Tanya has made a memorial for her brother Rodney. And camera 4 is set up in the kitchen where cabinets are said to open by themselves. Before we even get a chance to start our investigation, the REM pod goes off in the memorial room. As you can see, I am standing completely outside of the room when it goes off. If you look just below the window, you can see an orb pass by the REM pod as it is going off. Take another look in slow motion. The REM pod goes off a second time while we are setting up our ITC laser experiment. Once again, you can see that no one is in the room when it goes off. If you believe that footsteps may have set it off, we prove this theory wrong while walking back from the laser room. I just realized that we never take off your logo, but I don't even know if you know what happened. It's, okay. it's, it's a local shop, and he sent it because it's like free advertising. We begin our investigation with a millimeter session. Right away, we get spikes in the kitchen. Holy crap, what, was anybody, yeah, that's recording, and Matt might have actually seen that. Just yeah. randomly, I got a 2.3 milligauss spike, which is fairly significant. We decide to test other areas of the kitchen to see if we get more spikes. Let me bring it over. There's two cabinets that open. This is the other one over here. Open one of these cabinets. Our next step is to move towards the back of the house. Now we're entering a room. This has Rodney's picture and some of his belongings here. Now the reason why we put the lasers in this room is because Tanya's dog, Paisley, will, 0.1, will just start jumping in circles around something that's not there. So like when you enter someone's home and they have a dog, a lot of times the dog will jump around you and bark at you. And that's basically what she does, but there's, she's doing it to nothing. And it's just 
it's a different vibe in this room. With no more major spikes, we feel as if we should move on to a spirit box session. Some spirit box. Let me go ahead and turn it on. I'm gonna ask you again. I'm gonna ask you again. Who is it that keeps opening these cabinets? His car after he passed away was here. Yeah. The car he passed away in, so. Could this be Mr. Powell asking where his car is? After all, it was recently removed from the garage. Again, we get drawn towards the back of the house. Whose picture is that? This is indeed a picture of Tanya's brother, Rodney. Is there anyone here with us at all? If there are, how many of you are there? Ten? Ten. I heard that. I heard that. I heard that one. I heard that one. Plane is dead. Ten. 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 Let me go back in the um, room that has Rodney stuff on there. Is there a reason why you painted on this wall? If it helps you, you can draw energy from our equipment. Our equipment gives off energy, electrical energy. Use that energy. Use this camera's energy to make yourself stronger so you can speak clearly through this. Dude, this camera is already down to one bar. Holy crap, really? Yeah. We've only been recording for like less than 20 minutes max. We should probably go um, change on battery. this spear mark session to change your camera battery. We decide to leave the spear box running on the kitchen counter while we return to base to change the camera battery. Although we don't get anything while we are back at base, the second half of our spirit box session would not disappoint. We're back. Give you some time to figure out the device. I'm going to walk through the house again. And I want you to talk to me. I want you to tell me something. Oh my gosh! Holy crap! What did it say? I just got a 5.7 before I started recording. Let me start recording. When I was getting out my phone, 1.9. Yes. That just said yes. I'm getting full cold chills. When I- holy crap, dude. When I was getting my phone out, I got like a 5 point something spike. That is a huge spike. 1.9. Yes. You can see from this angle that I am holding my phone at a safe distance from the top of the millimeter, so this would not have caused the spike. And I'm going to continue with spear box. Okay. Alright. It's going off. I was not close enough to make that go off. Look, I'll demonstrate here. That's how close I have to get to it. I was right here. Look how far away my hand is from the rim pod when it goes off. What we notice next is compelling. 
Once again, an orb passes above the REM pod when it goes off. This is visual evidence that orbs can cause a change in energy levels. Take another look. To finish our spirit box session, we head back towards the kitchen to try our luck once again. Hey? Either hey or like wait. You. You. That, I heard that for sure. Me? You. You. That, I heard that for sure. You want to know how to use this, this black box that I'm holding in my left hand? <laughs> Just speak into it. That's all you have to do. Just use your energy to speak through it. You'll be able to hear your own voice on this speaker. Probably for the first time in a long time. The next device that we decide to use is the Ovulus 5. We agree to send Steve and myself in to see if we can pick up any relevant words. We will periodically show a picture of the Ovulus word log to prove that the words were actually said. You can use this box that I have in my hand to speak to us. Um, you can pick words. Um, is there anything you need to say to us? Alice. Alice. Who's here, Alice? That was weird. Did you see that? No. Uh... I felt like something kind of pushed me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was wondering why you kind of stepped off to the side. That was weird. Can you speak with me? I'm sure you have something to say. Yeah, we have not gotten much on that. I have a feeling that it's the Native Americans that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And like I said, they're like, they're, they're like on, right on the peripheral, like right. And I don't know how to coax them in or make them, I don't think I'm going to have. So we're probably going to have to use something else for them to speak because that's it, all they have English no words. clue. Yeah, they, have they don't no, know. I feel like they're trying to, I don't even know, they're, they're curious. Yeah. We'll set this right here. Nor. Nor. Copper. Copper. Living. Living. Once. But once. <gasps> they were living once. Okay, I just got a cold chill. I did too. That was, that was a like full sentence. Right yeah. yeah, that was a full sentence. Living but once. The word copper is interesting because the Native Americans mined for copper in this area hundreds of years ago. I think I have an idea. Wow. We're going to keep doing obvious for a few minutes. Then I think we need to bring the primitive tools in because these Native Americans, I feel like if they're going to communicate through anything, it's going to be... I also think we should use the, um, the, um, um, I'm having a hard time talking. Fire. Fire. Which, uh, I heard that earlier. Through the spirit box. Remember, it sounded like... Crescent. Example, example crescent. crescent. Oh, like the moon? There's no moon in the sky right now. Report day. Day. Report day. Alignment. Religion. <gasps> Wait! What? 
Well, Moss. Okay. Moss. There, there's going to be that solar eclipse. And the sun and the moon is going to be completely aligned. What? Karen? Karen. Steve is speaking of the solar eclipse that is scheduled to happen on August 21st, 2017. I, I wonder if there's somebody that's trying to tell us about, because it's not the Native Americans that's speaking with us. Mostly. Mostly. Huh. So they're trying? Norman? Norman. So are you trying to explain to us what the Native Americans are I've doing? never gotten this many names on no. the populace. Well, they said there was 10 here. Yeah, that's true. That's and true. I, and I, I feel like this is a portal, of course. I feel I feel like somebody was trying to explain to us about the Native Americans. I really do. I feel like the Akasha. 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 Our audio technician, Richard Salisbury, later informs us that Akasha is the word for ether in Indian cosmology. He also states that it was adopted into the Western world in the 19th century and that it means sky in other languages. As you can see, the ovulus produced a large amount of words, which is typically uncommon. This makes what happens next even more compelling. Please. 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 Oh, about a big chief. chief. Heavy. Heavy. Nana. Nana. Yes. Okay, we just got like 10 words in a row. I am fully chilled. Me too. One of the words was chief. Out of the 10 words that were listed on the ovulus, chief is one of the most relevant. What can you? Homicide. Nine. Nine. Nine British. Nine British. That totally makes sense, man. Continued. That totally makes sense. Remember that the British once battled the Miami Indians in this area of Ohio. I think we need to get the tool the primitive tools. Do you? I do. Should we should we uh bring the ovulus with us though too? Or not? Hey. Hey. It's a day again. Logical. 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 He said it was a good idea. Okay, they agree. They agree. <laughs> Obviously. The primitive tools that we will be using for this investigation are quartz crystals and dowsing rods. Quartz crystals are said to attract energy and protect against evil. Dowsing rods or divining rods are said to react to and point in the direction of energy. We decide to have Steve hold the dowsing rods and Trey hold the ovulus. I will be using a full spectrum camera to see if we capture anything in a different spectrum of light. They're going in the opposite directions of each other. They are. Which one's Just the a little where? bit. The right one is pointing to the right. To the right which... Keep us posted on that obvious tray. I know we'll probably hear it. But... I'm using a full spectrum camera so that it can see things that we can't see with our own eyes. So, oh, they're moving apart. That one's pointing into. I can feel it moving. That's wait, hold on. Crazy. Stay still. Maybe it's because it's touching. No, it's not even touching the wall. It pointed directly into this room. Okay. I did. I felt it like move. I think we need to go into this room. It's really lightning outside. If that's the correct word to use. <laughs> oh, across. Okay. They're crossed fully in an X. That was my stomach. <laughs> I'm really glad because that sounded kind of sinister. <laughs> yeah, I'm sinisterly hungry. <laughs> okay, let's let's move on. I'm gonna turn around. All right. Turn this way. This thing has been quiet since we've been in the kitchen. Which is strange. Which validates it too. Yeah. It's not. It doesn't just spew words every once in a while. All right. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand, yeah, like right over here. All right, they're kind of away from each other a little bit. Okay, I think we ought to take the crystals out and maybe go back into Rodney's room. What? I just felt something. 
Well, could, could you have been touching it at your chest? Okay, because so. I felt like something tugged my shirt, so maybe we might have got that on camera. Yeah, or something was. Look at Steve's shirt again in slow motion. You can see it get pulled tighter. His arms are completely still after he moves his right one up, so this couldn't have caused it to tighten. You can see from this angle that Trey and I are too far away from Steve to pull his shirt. He even demonstrates the tug on my shirt. After this ovula session, Tanya informs us that she would like to go with Steve into the memorial room to conduct a personal spare box session. Who's speaking? Who is it? What, what did he say? Uh, did he say trust me? I don't know. What did he say? Uh, what did he say? Uh, We later found out that this was a common phrase that Tanya's brother Rodney used. Oh my God. Yeah. Tanya! Tanya! Oh my God! <laughs> wow! Tanya! Tanya! Oh my God! Tanya! Oh my god! Me. So it's Rodney. Rodney? Yeah, he's still in here. Who is this? Me. Who is this? Me. Tanya, what's your grandmother's name? Patricia. Talk to her because I there's a female coming through too. Patricia. Say hi to her. Hi, did that just say hi? Hi, did that just say hi? Hi, did that just say hi? After such compelling spear box evidence, I decided to bring the whole investigation team in to finish the session. I believe that all of our energy will provide a good environment for the spirits to communicate. While we were gathering the team, Camera 3 catches a loud bang from within the room. Also, while back at base, we hear a disembodied voice say what we believe is hey at the time, but turns out to be no after review. We believe that the voice is a response to a statement made right before the voice is heard. And I'm still not scared of sex in here. I'm fine. Oh, yeah, I was. Huh? What was that? Was that a No, no. Someone said, hey. Wait, did she not say anything? I didn't say nothing. Well, didn't she just say, huh? She said, you didn't say, huh? She said, huh? To someone? You said, huh? I said it back, but I never said, hello. No one said something. No one said anything. No. When you said, no. Before you said, huh? You heard somebody say, it's like someone said, hey. Yeah, that's why you said, huh, right? It was a, oh yeah, I want to. I have a feeling, you know. Huh? Oh yeah, I want to. I have a feeling, you know. Huh? 
We believe the voice is responding to Devin saying that it has been a positive feeling in the house. Could this be a spirit that is not happy about our investigation? The team continues on with the plan and heads to the memorial room for a group spirit box session. Rodney? No. It's a female. No. It's a female. No. It's a female. We then received a name of a person that Tanya warned us about and that she doesn't want to talk to. She asked us not to include that part in the episode. We decided that this was a good place to end our investigation. The time that we spit on Sulphur Springs will be an experience that each member of our team will never forget. We captured a lot of compelling evidence that we can add to our experience as paranormal investigators. We connected our findings with relevant history and used many different tools to do so. In the end, the importance of the evidence we gathered almost seemed insignificant compared to the opportunity that we gave to our client to say the final goodbyes that she didn't have the chance to say before. I love you, Bobby. <sighs> I love you.